What if I told you there's a magical way to make money move on its own without your bank judging your pizza expenses? Today, we're diving into smart contracts, solidity, and remix ID. Basically, everything you need to know for the SPPOL T3 blockchain practicals. So, for this video, I've taken a more structured approach. So, we will be taking a look at what are smart contracts, basically an overview about the concept. Then we'll write a smart contract in Solidity and look at its structure. So those two things. Then we will take a look at Remix ID, the platform in general. And we will implement or execute a smart contract on Remix. Part 1. What are smart contracts? Imagine this, you and your friend made a deal. You bring me pizza and I'll give you a hundred rupees. Now normally you're supposed to trust your friend, but you know your friend ate, the, ate that pizza all by himself. Now what if code could write and fix this issue? This is basically a smart contract. If pizza is delivered, then we'll send some money. Everything happens automatically and can't be stopped. This is quite similar to the textbook definition of a smart contract. That it's unstoppable, automatic and enforceable. Here are some of the properties of a smart contract. It's automatically executable, enforceable, semantically sound and secure and unstoppable. Part 2. Structure of a Solidity Contract Reels bahut dekhte hai aap, par documentation nahi padte. That's right guys, today we're going to overcome our worst fear, reading the docs. <laughs> but seriously, these documents contain a lot of information, right from the basics to literally how an Ethereum VM works. Which is quite useful if you actually want to learn more about the Solidity language and how smart contracts work. Just make sure that your version is 0.80 as there are various versions of these documentations. So let's take a look at the layout of a source file. We first start off with the SPDX license identifier. It's basically used to uh, license your code. Since smart contract is an actual contract, it helps that the contract itself is licensed under some copyright law. So in this case it's under MIT but if you don't want your code to be licensed you can use unlicensed and keep that thing private. So the next thing after the license identifier are pragmas. Pragmas are basically used to tell the compiler the version of a solidity code so that uh, compatibility issues don't arise. That's pretty much it. And we'll move on to the rest of the structure. We have state variables functions, function modifiers and events. We'll take a look at this in detail as and when we write our contract as well. And if you want to explore more things about it, uh, you can read the entire documentation. <laughs> Basically, state variables are used to store the data uh, which you, you know, want to use in your entire contract, just like class variables. Functions, I don't think I've explained that separately. We have function modifiers which sort of add a layer of conditions over your own function. I mean, that's how we will be using them to sort of limit how the function can be used. And then we have events. Events are basically something that is emitted after a function has happened. You know, something like the producer consumer model. So this is how we sort of notify the other parts of the program that okay this event has happened if there's something uh, like which is supposed to happen make sure it happens now that's pretty much it we have struct types and enums but uh, I won't be going like explaining those in this video just because this is something you can explore on your own we will be requiring the knowledge of solidity however Please do go through the documentation once just so that you have the basics cleared but don't worry I'll go through the basics while writing the code itself so even if you don't go through you'll get to know 
part 3 writing a smart contract all right time to make our own mini bank where you are the bank no paperwork no minimum balance required just pure smart contracts so i've opened up my text editor on my pc uh, we'll just make a file for our smart contract uh, over here the solidity files have a .sol extension and we'll call it my bank i don't know because scam coin sounds kind of sus so first of all we'll mention the license identifier i really don't care the default is mit and uh, yeah it's just two like forward slashes just keep that in mind then we'll move on and write our pragma version over here i got the greater than also but that's really not necessary you can just include the 0 0.8.0 with an exponent sign at the start now we'll create a smart contract a smart contract's name will be bank account i'm the author then this is how the format is for a contract basically write contract followed by the name then over here we will be using two state variable owner and balance owner has the data type address which contains the bitcoin or you know cryptocurrency wallet uh, address and the un256 is a data type which contains the balance the bank balance one might say now once we have these two just note that one of them is public and the other one is private we'll get to that later now we want to make sure that we define our events the first one is deposit where we just have to ensure that this action or this event is emitted on deposit our parameters are going to be the address of the account which is the owner and the amount then we'll make another one for withdrawal which is exactly the same as deposit so we'll just copy that and we'll rename it just for the just the event which is going to be there for withdrawing or on withdrawal now we'll define a constructor constructors are public by default so you don't need to write public over there and our constructor is going to be a default constructor so we'll just define like the owner over there which is going to be the message dot sender this is actually a, a star, like global variable in solidity and we'll initialize the balance to zero so the message dot sender is present by default in every smart contract you can make use of these global variables to sort of get the owner's uh, crypto wallet address the metamask wallet or whatever wallet provider you get that address now we'll write a modifier so we had a modifier is going to be only owner which is basically going to say that okay this operation can be performed just by the owner so we'll use this where if message dot sender equals equals owner then the action will happen or else we'll give an error message that sorry only the owner can perform this action the underscore is a placeholder it means that the code of the function the modifier is attached to is meant to be run with the event then we'll actually start writing a function a function is going to be for deposit and uh, yeah over here we won't be taking the deposit amount because we'll take that from the global variable itself and yeah our deposit is public and we have uh, playable included over here right so this is just a check where you know the message value like the deposit value should be greater than zero to basically prevent an invalid transaction also note that we have over here used message dot value which is a global variable containing the deposit value entered from the remix id itself now if require is actually successful then the program below is executed or else it's automatically the error message ke saath exited right and yeah we'll emit the deposit event saying that okay this much has been deposited now we have the same for withdrawal where you know for withdrawal we'll add the condition that withdrawal amount should be greater than zero and uh, 
it can be only performed by the owner that's why we are adding that function modifier only owner over there so first we'll say amount greater than zero and the other condition is going to be that the amount should be less than the balance so if that happens where amount is greater than the balance then you need to say that okay suff insufficient funds you can't withdraw so you'll write you're broke lol yeah just roast the guy a bit yeah. now just a couple of things are left we'll update the balance after the withdrawal has been done we'll use the payable uh, thing over there to show that the amount has been transferred to the actual uh, you know uh, person who withdrew the amount and then we'll emit the withdrawal message that okay this much amount has been withdrawn from this uh, the owner's you know wallet or the owner's address so that's the msg dot sender and that's pretty much it the only thing left is to create a getter function for a private variable so like i said our bank balance variable or the balance variable is private so we need to you know to view the balance we need to make a get a function for it so this is basically the signature for it public view returns we use it so that you know the get a function is implemented and the data type the return type is un256 which is the same as balance and we just simply return the balance it's a pretty small smart contract just 31 lines so that's it part 4 remix ide okay now we'll go to remix remix.ethereum.org which is basically an ide for executing all your solidity or any other smart contracts smart contracts can be written in rust as well this is the file explorer page where we can you know upload our file so we'll upload our mybank.sol smart contract yeah there see yeah, we'll upload this and that is available we can compile it so in the solidity compiler compile it so i got a green which is basically it's all right if you get a red just read the error and then maybe panic a little i don't know over here at deploy and run you can either select your smart wallet i already have a metamask wallet installed you just have to go to browser extension and injected provider and choose whatever your provider is your other option is the remix vms as well which you know they have a lot of vms over there so you can choose any one and go ahead with that option now that we've uh, take a look at these features we can do deploy and run and yeah this is a debugger we have a git and contract verification features over there so i mean these are not really that useful we'll primarily be using deploy and run over there part five implementing a smart contract now that we've actually uploaded this and looked at all the features we can just deploy and verify this so it opened up my metamask wallet thing so i just have to click on confirm I'll be charged a fee every time a transaction happens. So I'll just open the terminal. Yeah, the transaction has been confirmed now. I'll just try to open the terminal and we can actually see like the transaction happening. Yeah, so my bank account was created. We can verify all of this on like a web page. That's actually really convenient because I'm using Sepolia, which is a public testnet uh, blockchain. So yeah, you can see all the details over here. You can see the deployer. You can see the actual smart contract that was executed. And all the other, you know, required details, they're all publicly available. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we can perform other operations where, you know, I can uh, deposit values over here. So let's deposit 100. And we'll go on to our uh, deployed contracts. Eh? Yeah, so over here we can click on deposit. Now every time I do an operation, uh, MetaMask actually asks me for confirmation. That's because they actually charge me a little bit for each and every operation that is performed or every process transaction. 
so now the deposit happened we'll give a call yeah okay so the transaction has been verified now we can see now we can get balance and we can actually see our updated balance is 100 this owner this was actually a public variable remember in a smart contract so there's a getter function for this well for the private variable we had to define a get balance getter function now we'll withdraw a really huge amount so that you know we get an error see over here is warning us that don't do this it will probably fail the thing is that the i am charged every time right this uh, any transaction is processed because it is processing that transaction and then you know it incurs some cost to do it on public uh, blockchains so even metamask will actually tell me that this transaction is likely to fail so i mean i can proceed anyways because this is just a test net and it's free for me but yeah this is what uh, the charges are incurred so yeah, this will happen and we will get an error shortly saying that this transaction was failed and yeah we can also use etherscan to sort of check our transactions this is all publicly available by the way so all the details and all are uh, can be examined by anyone which is one of the good things that all transactions are transparent so your blockchain uh, wallet id and all everything is visible we can also check yeah this is a failed transaction so you can see over here the transaction was failed you can check all the details yeah you are broke lol it's roasting us for being broke and yeah in more details you know you can find out all the other details as well so that was pretty much it for the uh, remix id and the smart contract is implemented already you can use a remix vm if you don't have a metamask wallet and that's pretty much it from my side guys thanks for watching smash that like button hit subscribe and if you're interested for the next part drop a comment saying i'm bankman